to Richard Wolf. Early detection is the key to successful treatment of cancer. Efficient methods for early detection are meanwhile available for many areas of cancer diagnosis. Up to now, there were no diagnostic tools for reliable early diagnosis of lung cancer. For this reason, lung cancer is frequently diagnosed in a late stage in which the prognosis for the patient is already disastrous. As can be seen in the diagram, the five-year survival rate in lung cancer has stagnated at a dissatisfying value up to now, in particular when compared to types of cancer with efficient early diagnosis. The reasons for inefficient early diagnosis are complex. In the case of conventional diagnostic tools, such as computer tomography, for example, the resolution frequently is not adequate to visualize pre-malignant and early malignant lesions, which could still be curatively treated. As a result of its higher resolution, bronchoscopy permits the visualization of smaller lesions. However, in white light illumination, Pre-malignant and early malignant lesions do not contrast with the surrounding healthy tissue, either due to their color or geometry. Thus, they frequently remain inconspicuous in conventional bronchoscopy. This situation is improved by diagnostic autofluorescence endoscopy. In conventional bronchoscopy, the tissue is illuminated with white light, which is light consisting of the entire visible color spectrum. When the light hits the tissue, different effects are observed. Part of the instant light is directly reflected at the tissue surface. Another part penetrates the tissue and is dispersed in the tissue particles, an effect which, together with reflection, enables the visualization of the tissue in the first place. And finally, there's yet another part which is absorbed by the tissue. The largest fraction of these absorbed light rays is transformed into heat by the tissue particles, an effect which is used by some therapeutic laser applications, for example. A considerably smaller fraction of the incident and absorbed light is converted by the tissue into light of another wavelength, that is, into another color. An effect we know from everyday life when using highlighters, for example. The scientist refers to this phenomenon as fluorescence, and as here, the tissue particles themselves are responsible for the fluorescent action. That is, there are no exogenic tissue markers. The phenomenon here is referred to as autofluorescence. In case of conventional white light bronchoscopy, reflected and dispersed light are primarily seen whilst the autofluorescent light plays a subordinate role only. However, if the tissue is illuminated with blue light, the situation is entirely different. Pathologically changed tissue fluoresces distinctly less than healthy tissue. Pre-malignant and early malignant lesions with little lateral expansion and low cell layer thickness stand out distinctly against healthy tissue. Of course, this effect has to first be made visible for the eye, as the reflection and dispersal of the blue light are still dominant. The filter blocks out the blue fraction of the light. Only the autofluorescent light is visible. However, the pre-malignant and early malignant tissue cannot be differentiated from blood and inflamed tissue. Both appear dark. But our specialists have found a solution here as well, an especially constructed filter. Due to this filter, the pre-malignant and early malignant lesions stand out distinctly against the blood-tinged parts. This much on the functional principle of diagnostic autofluorescence endoscopy. May I introduce DAFE.
Now I'd like to present the DAIF system in use. It appears to be conventional white light bronchoscopy, but let us take a closer look. Well, there is nothing conspicuous, and yet the patient is a classic high-risk patient for a bronchial carcinoma. Now at the latest, the time has come for DAIF. And in actual fact, DAIF is in operation already. The camera controller, the light source and the video bronchoscope which are being used here are also components of the DAIF system. No rearrangement, no change of devices, you simply have to press another button. Look, fluorescence. But down here, we cannot see a thing because we're between the filters. Let's look at the screen. On the one hand, fluorescence depends on the state of the tissue. And on the other hand, it depends on the patient himself, that is the structure of his mucous membrane. For this reason, it's imperative that another color comparison is performed, the so-called ICB. The color comparison has to be carried out in situ, that is, directly at the healthy tissue. Mucus should be drawn off prior to the procedure. The main carina has proved to be suitable for color comparison. The intelligent color comparison process sets the screen such that healthy tissue, pre-malignant and early malignant lesions, as well as severe inflammations or blood, can be clearly differentiated from each other. DAIF thus offers maximum tissue differentiation. Oh, definitely conspicuous tissue. For final diagnosis, we'll take a specimen for the pathologist. Well, that's done. Conventional procedures such as CT, PET and white light bronchoscopy reveal cancer frequently only in stages in which there is little chance for healing. DAIF permits the recognition of pre-malignant and early malignant lesions, that is, those tissue mutations which give the patient a good prognosis. A change from white light to DAIF is quick and easy to perform. By the way, the image quality in DAIF mode is brilliant, which also facilitates the diagnosis. Abracadabra. No. Indeed, early detection with DAIF is really not witchcraft. <laughs>